Last Android component we're going to talk about, and then we can get on to the really fun part, broadcast receivers. So at this point, we've covered activities, which are user-facing components. We've talked about services, which are background components. We've talked about content providers, which are used to store information, often persistently. And now we're going to talk about broadcast receivers. Broadcast receivers are used to respond to system-wide event broadcast announcements. What the heck does that mean? We'll talk more about it and I'll show you some examples. Clients can either dynamically or statically express receivers that they want to have used to handle these requests when they're broadcast in the system. And we'll see later that there's several different types of events. There's application events and there's system events. And so you can register uh, either statically or dynamically for these intents to be sent to you. The events are implemented as intents, as you might expect. So here's a simple example where we have a battery service. And the battery service, which is implemented down in a low-level device driver, is keeping track of, of whether or not the battery is getting low. And when it's getting low, it sends out an intent that says battery is low. And when it sends it out, anybody in the system who's subscribed to the battery is low intent will receive notification of this. And so there's a couple of different things that might care about that. Uh, for example, the phone might care about this because it might want to beep. You know, like if you're in the middle of a phone call and your battery is running down, it might want to beep. Or it might want to, you know, change an icon in the status notification bar or something to get your attention to know that you're, you're running out of power. Um, there may be other things in the system that also care about this. You might have the system server want to know, system service want to know about this because maybe it's going to start, you know, scaling back on the amount of memory that's used. Or maybe it's going to shut down unneeded applications. Or it's going to, you know, uh, make the screen go dark faster to try to conserve power, right? There's a bunch of things that could happen in response to this. And the battery service doesn't know what the, what the various parties are going to do about it. It just knows battery is getting low. So that's why this this ability to, to broadcast is very useful. You don't want every application having to repeatedly poll and say, hey, you know, what's going on? Is the battery low? Is the battery low? What, what a good way to make the, the battery run out is to have everybody poll it all the time, right? Um, so for like the phone app, if, you know, if the battery is low, it's probably going to produce a toast or something. Um, does it have to be handled by the phone app? Like, it doesn't have to be. It, it is. It, it turns out if you, if you look in Android, you'll see that they subscribe to battery low. But that's mostly because oftentimes when you're in a, you're in a phone call, there's no, easy, there's no other easy way to get your, your attention other than like flashing the screen or making a noise or something like that. Because yeah. the, the screen is blocked at that point. Right. So could something like, let's say you had an app that was like a third party app that didn't subscribe to that. Could the Android, like, I don't know, what, like, what would it go through like, to hijack that to you know, pop and stuff or something? Uh, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Okay, so you would have to subscribe if you wanted to show the user or something. Yeah. If, if to generalize your question, if, if there are things that happen asynchronously that you want to be notified about that are system oriented, like someone plugging the headset in, or they plug the power in or out, or the battery's getting low, there's a whole pot of system events we'll look at in a second that all have to be subscribed to. And then you have to do that. When an event happens and the system determines you're the, the party, because it does the intent resolution stuff we talked about before, then the on receive hook method is called back by Android's activity manager and the intense framework and so on. And that's what's used to actually handle whatever occurred. And <coughs> sometimes, and we'll talk about this in a second, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that the ap application is actually running. The, the, it may be that the application is dormant. And so you, the Android will actually start up an application process to run the broadcast receiver. And oftentimes, when the broadcast receiver is done, the process that's hosting it, that was started by Android, goes away almost instantaneously. In fact, there's some special constraints you have to think about with broadcast receivers because they're not really meant to stick around for any length of time. And we'll talk more about that in a second. A lot of the, a lot of the things that you get that are intense come from system services, right? So, you know. Battery power connected, that's one thing. When you plug in, you'll get notified. Battery power disconnected, when you pull the plug out, you get notified, because that might want to you know, dim the screen. Battery being low, we just talked about that. Battery is OK, again, it got to a certain charging level. Uh, you plug in the, the action, you, know, you plug in the headset. Well, you want to you have 
anything that's using the speaker stop doing that, right? You want to stop, you know, blaring music at the speaker and have it redirected through the headset. So these are all examples of things you might need to subscribe to to find out what's happening. These intents can also come from application components. So you might have a download service where after the download is completed, you want to broadcast download done so that anybody else who wants to use your download service can then go ahead and get the, get the content that's associated with that. All right, so implementing a broadcast receiver takes a number of steps. I decided my, my Odessa steps were too cheesy, so I got rid of my Odessa steps, although I like them. Now I just have a, a boring you know, picture of the, the class here. You extend the broadcast receiver class. You override the on receive hook method, which as you can see takes a couple of things. It takes a context and the intent. The context is a restricted context. There's certain things you cannot do in the context of a broadcast receiver, and we'll talk more about that. You may have to implement a few other methods that you want to implement what happens here. So here's display bitmap, just for kicks, we put that in there. And then, of course, you also have to put the broadcast receiver in the, man in the Android manifest file if you want it to be visible to other things. Um, if you don't want it to be visible to other things, you don't need to, to, to put it in there. The other thing you would typically do is you would make intent filters that we just talked about. So you're, you get called back when things happen that you care about, like battery voltage low, right? I subscribe to the, to the battery low uh, intent so I can be, be notified, waked up, or, or spawned if I need to do that. All right, so that's just a quick overview of sort of how you program these things. You can register for interest in intents via intent filters. And I should have an intent filter picture there. Um, under the hood, this filtering mechanism is done by the Activity Manager service, which I mentioned before is like this 12,000 line long file. It's gigantic. And if you poke around in it, you see that the Activity Manager works in conjunction with the Package Manager. And so this is really cool. If you really want to give yourself a, a steroid boost of Android internals, take a look at the code. And what you'll see is that when you install an application, when you download an application from the Play Store, it reads through your manifest file. And it takes out of your manifest file the information having to do with all the components that are described in the manifest file. And it figures out the intent filters that they have. And it puts all that stuff into a database that's stored on the, on the phone. And undoubtedly using SQLite. And so that gets stored there. And so when an intent comes in, it goes through and it searches that database of all the intent filters that have been registered in, on the device from the package manager. It goes and it looks up and it figures out which of the various components that were registered by the package manager when you installed the application, which of those things match the intent. So you can imagine how ridiculously complicated that is. And if you look at the code, you'll see it's ridiculously complicated. But the long and the short of it is it, it's really cool. And it allows you to be able to defer this, this matching until, until programs are running. There are two ways to register receivers. One way is to statically publish them in the Android manifest file. That's, that's the predominant way of doing things. So here's an example where we might have a, a, the phone application. And we might want to have uh, different things. So if, if the, uh, the ongoing, if a call is hung up, you want to subscribe to that. If somebody sends a, an SMS, uh, SMS message, that's also handled by the phone, believe it or not. It's a, it's a, it's a phone service protocol. Then we're going to have to go ahead and, and get these applications started or launched in order to do, do that stuff. That's one way to do it. Um, if the receiver is not running, and it typically won't be running if you're doing it statically, then Android will automatically launch the receiver and give it the intent to work on. And that intent will always run in the main thread of control of the application that was just started. The second way to do it is through the content register receiver. So you can actually dynamically register these things on the fly. So here's an example also from the phone app where we're basically registering for airplane mode changes. So your, your phone actually has to be up and running in that case. So in airplane mode, you know, when you go into airplane mode, that you make an intent filter dynamically and you register it. And when airplane mode changes, that intent will be delivered to that application. 
By default, things show up in the user interface thread. They can't block for any length of time because they're in the user interface thread. If you want to be more fancy, and this is very rare, but you can do it. When you register these things, you can actually give them a handle. We'll talk more about a, or a handler. You give it a handler, and the broadcast event will be sent to the thread that manages that handler. That, that's very rare, so you, you don't do that. You can also start a new process. That's also not common with the approach we're looking at here. Receivers have to be limited in what they can do, because remember, they're largely being run in the, the user interface thread. You can't show dialogues. Anything that involves interaction with the user cannot be done. You can't do those things. You can't bind to a service inside of a uh, broadcast receiver. You can create status bar notifications. So you can put things up like email arrived, right? that kind of stuff, or a new SMS message, new Facebook posting, whatever. Those are things you can put into the status bar, but that's not quite the same thing. It's more, it's more restricted. All right, last thing here, which should finish up in a second. There's several different types of mechanisms for broadcasting to this, this uh, broadcast receiver service. You can send things normally through send broadcast. And that is completely asynchronous. It just sends them off, sort of a fire and forget like protocol. All the receivers get them concurrently. So if there's more than one thing that receives it, they all sort of, quote, get it at the same time. You can do it via ordered broadcast, in which case they are done one at a time in order. And if a receiver doesn't want anybody else to get it, it can say, all right, that's it. I'm going to swallow this event. It's done. And then the third thing you can use is you can send the events in a sticky way. And sticky events basically mean that they will stick around. Whoops. Wow. Don't send. <laughs> that's annoying. We'll finish up here in just a second. It was, it was probably trying to say we're running out of time. <laughs> um, here, let me just quickly get this back on track. We'll wrap up. Um, so Sticky basically says, even if uh, st Sticky says it'll stick around, so if late joining receivers come along, they can read those events. So if somebody comes along later, they can still read the same uh, event that was posted earlier. All right, last thing, there's security issues with intents. You have to be careful with them because of the fact that they are inter-application. There's a namespace issue. If, if everybody uses the same names for the intents, they're going to collide. So you have to make sure you always prefix them properly with the right, you know, um, edu.vanderbilt.blah, uh, you know, edu blah, that kind of stuff. So you, you get the prefixes properly. Any application can send an intent to somebody who's registered with register receiver. So it's, it's very permissive. You know, it's kind of like, hey, it's free love, man. It's San Francisco. You know, we can do whatever we want. There's a nice paper, which you can read about here, that talks about a gazillion problems with Android intents from a security point of view. They talk about you know, broadcast hijacking and, or bro broadcast theft and activity hijacking and all this kind of stuff. So I recommend taking a look at that. You could also send intents to receivers that are published in the manifest file, and it'll actually just ignore the, it'll ignore the um, filters and, and send them anyway. So you, one way to do that is just not make it exported. <coughs> send broadcast can be uh, hijacked or, or stolen by other applications. They, it just goes out in the system, so you can sort of, uh, you can masquerade as somebody else. You can use the set package to restrict broadcast to a single application. And if you're doing a lot of broadcasts and you can localize them within a process, you might want to use the local broadcast manager instead of using the global broadcast manager. And that way, the intents never go outside the address space of the process. OK, so I wanted to just give you an overview of broadcast intents. We're not going to talk much about them at all in the rest of the class, but you should at least be aware of it. Someone had an interview the other day with Google uh, for an internship, and they asked a bunch of questions about Android and how you might do things and how you would design stuff. So mercifully, the, you've been in the class for a couple weeks, so you're able to answer those questions. So at least knowing the fact that a broadcast receiver exists might come in handy in that situation. But it's not the most common thing that you need to do.